What is up, my little tubers? We're back for some more drafting here on Magic Online. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all of your Magic card-related needs. It's another week, and this time we've got Modern Horizons 2 flashback occurring. So last week we had the original Modern Horizons. This week we have Modern Horizons 2. And uh, yeah, we will jump into this format. I was a big fan of this format. Lots of fun things that you could do. Um, let's just jump into our pack really quickly. We open the Master of Death as our rare. Not a bad one, good grindy out card. Other cards I do like. Scuttle Tide, there was a good madness card in this format. Sweep the Skies, great converge card. Let's see. Uh, Terminal Agony, another good madness card. Wave Sifter. I think I like taking Sweep the Skies here. Pick one, pack one. Maybe doing some fun um, converge slash artifact or flying plan, depending on what we can get from here. Although a second pick, Unholy Heat, probably makes the most sense. In this sealed format, you could do some really, really fun um, domain stuff, or in essence, domain stuff, just because everybody had access to all of these artifact lands that are indestructible. Um, and yeah, converge, I guess, is the is the thing. Not so much domain, but kind of like taking the second or rather the uh, Unholy Heat here, just as a good removal spell and seeing what we can keep getting past from there on out. Oop, had a little blip with my recording thing. Anyways, yeah, we took the Unholy Heat. Now we're getting past pick number three, Glinting Creeper. Pretty solid Converge card, can be really, really big. And it was a battlefield with two 1-1 one -one counters on it for each color of mana spent. So even if you're only playing three colors, this could be a three, or rather a five mana 6-6. Six -six. Timeless Witness, awesome, awesome grind out card. Obviously, lots of value there. Cookbook, very, very nice one for the Madness discard decks. Chrome Courier, pretty nice one for the um, artifact deck. And remember, the artifact lands are also hittable off of this, right? Reveal the top two cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the other into your graveyard. If you put an artifact card in your hand, this way you gain three life. So you got to draw a card no matter what, right? Yeah, just a nice, solid Chrome Courier. Mr. Crab, Hard Evidence was always solid. I kind of like going the grind out value and taking the Timeless Witness here. Into perhaps a Fast and Furious. I don't actually recall this card being all that amazing. Um, Burdened Aerialist was okay. You make a treasure, so that's good for Converge. Whenever you sack a token, it gains flying until end of turn. A couple of these basic land cyclers are available in the format. These ones are always solid. You could cast them later on as a decent spell or cycle them away for a land if you need it too early. I don't th think I'm too keen on taking that here. Uh, the bridge is a little bit off color right now. I don't mind just taking the Fast and Furious if we wanted to. Although I remember the artifact deck being super fun in this format. Like red white super artifact aggro, I think it was the um, the uh, what's it called modular. That's right, the modular ability. In fact, I think I might just jump into that. The modular deck was super fun. As we see a batter bone here, the baby batter skull. Oh, late to dinner. There was a fun reanimate style deck. In fact, a lot of the cards in this format had like evoke, so you could evoke them early and then get them back later. That was always good. There was a red-white land. No, if I remember correctly, the red-white artifact aggro deck, if you could pull it together, was really freaking good. Whenever you cast your third spell each turn, put a 1-1 counter on this, and it deals damage equals to power to ta any target. Not bad. Mind Collapse was also fantastic. Four mana, deal five damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then uh, you can sack a mountain instead to pay its cost. But yeah, I think I like moving into the red-white uber aggro deck. I'm going to pass the Captain Ripley, getting the ability to trigger... If you did, was often game ending, but it was so hard to do that initially. So let's just take the collapse there. Gargadon, I think, was okay. Oh, Breathless Knight was good too, wasn't it? 2 2 Flying Lifelink. When this or another creature enters the battlefield under control, if that creature entered from a graveyard, you cast it from a graveyard. Yeah, it got bigger, bigger, bigger. So something nice with like late to dinner was always good. Could actually take an artifact land here too if we wanted to. I could see a lot of upside in taking the tap land. 
because there are cards that care about like sacrificing artifacts and so getting some minor off color artifacts lands wasn't a bad strategy capricrome i don't recall this being great in the artifact deck although it looks like it was probably okay could take a battle plan here another decent basic land cycler generally i don't think hard casting this was any good lightning spear also just okay Hmm. I don't remember. I guess I kind of just like taking the battle plan for land cycling. Another Knighted Mirror is good. So whenever one or more counters are put on Knighted Mirror, it gains double strike until end of turn. And it had the adaptability, but there are some tricks in this format that give 1-1 counters. So that was always pretty good with that. Um... Oh yeah, Blacksmith Skill was another one you really wanted for the artifact deck. Target permanent gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. If it's an artifact creature, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So very, very nice trick here. Another land cycler, that was a good one. Although Chrome Courier is a little bit juicy. Do we really want the Kolos in our deck though? I don't think we do. I'd rather take Chrome Courier for a potential blue splash. Spears fine. Well, there's late to dinner. Maybe we end up playing that. Ah, here's one of the ways to put 1-1 one, one counters. The unbounded potential. Two mana, put a 1-1 one, one counter of each up to two creatures. And then you can proliferate, and it also has entwine. So yeah, this is looking like a decent start to the red-white artifact aggro deck. One of my favorites when it came together, and you can frequently get away with like 15 lands in this deck. Just because your curve was generally super low. Uh, there were relevant one-drops. I think there was like a mouse or something. A modular mouse for one mana. Oh, we opened a Ragavan. Uh, this is Phantom, unfortunately. I completely forgot Ragavan was in this format. I mean, obviously, this is a slam dunk if we're playing red. Yeah. What a card. Ragavan, Nimble, Pilfer. Um, oh, yeah. I remember the Abiding Grace. So there were some cheap one mana artifact creatures that you could sacrifice for some value. So this was a really, really funny one. Could go off really hard, but yeah, obviously this is just a ragavan and laugh. What was this one again? Piercing Rays. It was exile a tapped creature, and then you could forecast and reveal the tap a creature. I don't recall that being that good. Mount Velus Manticore, I think was good, but probably not for what we're doing. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may discard a card. When you do, it deals X damage to any target with X and number of card types. The card. Okay, so. Discarding like an artifact creature would ping for two. And this was not a must ability. You didn't have to use it. What is the best card in this pack? It's probably the Rift Sower. I remember this one being excellent. Yeah, I'm okay taking a little bit of top end though with all the artifact creatures. Uh, here's another decent pack here for us. Arcbound Whelp, 2-2 two -two Flyer with Fire Breathing with Modular 2 is good. Extruder was okay. You normally sandbag this until like the pivotal turn where you play it and then you could sack up any number of artifacts to just overload on one creature. Let's take the flyer here though. Yeah, this is looking fun. Make sure we get enough early game plays. One, two. Oh yeah, so we need a lot more two drops especially, but one drops would be good as well. All right, on to the next pack. Let's see, what is Chef's Kiss again? Oh, yeah. Funny one. Sideboard funny card, but not one I want to main deck. The Dromedary was good too, wasn't it? Three mana, 2-2, two, two, enters with two counters. Doesn't untap if it has a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Oh, sorry. Three mana, 2-2, two, two, that enters with two counters. So it's a 4-4, four, four, right? At the beginning of combat on your turn, you can, you can move a 1-1 one, one counter from this onto another creature. Yeah, that was decent. Though I think we're just... Going to take another Mind Collapse here. Just pretty solid removal spell. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it's all coming back to me now. This was like the premium 3 drop we wanted, right? 3 mana, 2-2 two, two menace, modular 2. Whenever you cast a spell other than your first, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So with modular and with Mind Collapses, this thing could win the game out of nowhere. Perfect. Eh, yeah, we're getting another 2. Sorry, uh, Knighted Mirror. 
all about the arcbound trackers and the modular here. All right, so now we have four three drops, a couple of four drops. We just want to overload on as many, many two drop artifact creatures as we can find if we can get them. I mean, I'm not going to complain about getting another tracker, although Slag Strider was not bad. Seven mana, three, three, but it has affinity for artifacts, and then you could pay one and sack an artifact, deal one damage to any target. So that worked well with the, um, the what do you call them, lands, the artifact lands. But I have a hard time passing the trackers. Another mind collapse, too. Okay. Interesting. Are we going to end up playing three mind collapse? I guess we can. I need to take nothing but two drop creatures in pack um, three. Because right now, that is our creature curve. A big middle finger. One one drop, one two drop, five three drops, and two four drops. Not ideal. As we get a bunch of other artifacts again for three or four mana. Yeah, you just want more artifact creatures in this deck with all the modular cards. Um, sideboard Blossoming Calm, does that do anything? Probably not. I guess Sideboard Crypt Keeper makes more sense for the graveyard decks. There's the Extruder, that's a nice one. With all the modular, it's just way too good. In fact, let's just cut everything that's really not an artifact and go full-on artifact plan as we pick up... Ay -ay -ay. Way, 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 way too many. Way too many threes. I might not even run that battle plan. If I could just get like five two drops, five... Five mere prototypes or whatever arcbound prototypes in pack three, our deck would be great. So let's plan on that. Let's just get all of the two drop artifact creatures, no matter what they are, as long as they're on color. Okay, Constable of the Realm was also not terrible if you could add extra counters. Whenever one or more counters are put on it, exile up to one other non land permanent until it leaves the battlefield was good, yeah. Ah, there's the one drop I was talking about. The mere scrappling with that three mana artifact or enchantment that brought back one drops was pretty fun. The patrol is not a terrible two drop. It's not a true artifact, but it does make an artifact. But I kind of feel like just taking the pure artifact creature itself is better with all the modular. Yeah, that's got to be right. What a we I, I can't believe I'm first picking a mere scrappling, but... In these formats, just like with all Modern Horizons formats, it's so much more important to get the synergistic decks than go for, you know, pure card value. At least in draft. Nice, nice pick up there. Arcbound prototype. That's exactly what we were looking for. I mean, that's ideal, right? A one drop and a two drop to start pack three is absolutely ideal. Because... We need to have something to do on turn one or two. Otherwise, if we start on turn three, we might already be falling too far behind. Because this format does a lot of powerful things. Looks like we're probably going to want to lead a little or uh, lean a little bit heavier red too with this deck. Like at least nine mountains when I have triple mind collapse makes a lot of sense. So ideally with the Knighted Mirror, you activate the adaptability first, and then you add more counters later, yeah. Oh my gosh, we just got a Nettle Cyst. Dude, I have to take that, but what we really want to take here is the prototype number three. But this is just way too good in our deck. Living Weapon, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. Yeah, obviously that's just way too good in our deck. Can probably end up cutting the dromedary. Maybe cut the marble. Premium rare there for us. Ooh, speaking of premium, there's a fire and ice we could just take. Flame tongue yearling is always good. Um, yeah, when it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creatures. So two mana, two damage, and then it gets bigger, bigger later. Do want to find some foundry helixes later, probably, but not a huge deal. Yearling is just too much 
of a powerhouse. Academy Manufacturer was super fun. But easy rust fail bridge for us. Perfect fixing and an artifact land to boot. Other non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. I don't actually remember this being all that good. But it seems like a pretty nice one. I mean, out of the choices are two more three-drop artifacts, which... Other non-token creatures you control. Yeah, that seems nice. Was this card good? Goblin Trap Runner. It was funny. I think Break Ties actually makes more sense here. The Reinforce is good and the abilities are relevant. All right, so now we're just hoping to wheel another one or two drop, although I don't think we're going to wheel any of those prototypes. Sideboards, Piercing Rays. We'll play that Fairgrounds Patrol. That's a good enough two drop, and again, it makes an artifact later on. I think I'm just going to end up cutting the Gargadon. Yeah, this deck's nice. Pretty damn solid looking red white aggro. Do we want to run 16 lands or 17 lands here? I guess I'm probably okay running 17 lands, especially since we plan on likelihood anyway, sacking a few of them to the mine collapse. Tavern Scoundrel, what did this do again? No. Oh, we can take the power depot. Enters tapped. Add one colorless. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. And add modular. Yeah, that's nice. Good value there. Hey, we did wield the prototype. All right, that is sick. And the helix, which again is super good with modular cards. Although I do want that second skill. I think the helix makes the most sense. Draft deck is spicy. I'm going to cut probably the spear. I guess I could maybe go 16 lands. I'm not going to run another Knighted Mirror. Jeez, this deck is nice. Or maybe I can cut like one of the Mind Collapse. Maybe I can cut the Break Ties. I don't know. Three mind collapse seems like quite a bit. Other non-token creatures. Yeah, that's good. I guess the patrol maybe not necessary since we picked up all the other good twos. Still seems good enough though. Yeah, I'm okay. Well, no, I think Break Ties is really good in this format. There are a lot of relevant artifacts, enchantments, cards from great... Like, all of the abilities can be super relevant, plus the Reinforce is worth. I guess it could just be Scrappling that we cut since we picked up so many good twos. Go like that. And then 8-7 in favor of red for the mountains, even though we have quite a bit more white. Oh, nope, same amount. All right, I mean, my memory is a little bit hazy on this format, but I remember decks like this being extremely good. And this feels like it came together really well, so hopefully we can pull off some good wins with this. Okay, here we are for round one of this Modern Horizons 2 draft. Looks like we're on the draw here with a turn one Ragavan, though we are on the draw. Abundant Harvest from the opponent hits a Parcel Mirror, so blue-green, probably doing the tokeny theme-ish deck. Um, I'm going to go ahead and still run out the Ragavan turn one, because if we draw a Mountain, we can like kill their Parcel Mirror, and then smack in with the Ragavan would be decent for sure. If not, I think we'll just go with the Prototype and keep the curve going. Really want to hit a third land next turn, obviously. Unless they have another parcel mirror, sure. Perfect. So let's go with Knighted Mirror here and then attack for two. Because if they trade, then we can make the Knighted Mirror a 4 4. And 
man, the difference between being on the draw and the play of this game could be huge. Had we win on the play, Ragavan would have connected. All right, now we really need to have Mountain because Tireless Provisioner is also really freaking sick. Made a treasure token with that. Good, there's that. Let's kill their Provisioner. Go ahead and keep attacking. Urban, Dagger Tooth, 4-3, Vigilance, Enrage, whenever it's dealt damage, proliferate. All right, no big deal there. Let's see, good draw here for us. We get to attack with all of our non-Ragavan creatures, I think, because the potential here is going to be really good, putting 1-1 one, one counters, and we have the skill to pump up any of our non-Flame Tongue creatures. So, let's see. I could hit him for six or 13 here if I wanted to pump up my Knighted Mirror again, but I don't think we need to do that. I think hitting him for this much is pretty good. And we can still modular on our Knighted Mirror to make it fat this turn. Timeless Witness, that's fine. Getting back their Provisioner, that's fine. Well, 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 that is pretty good too. Let's see. So I just need to push in a little bit of damage actually. So let's, at this point, I think attack with, well, no, let's just attack in with the Knighted Mirror. Because they're not going to triple block it, but they are going to chump it. And then we can go Nettle Cyst. And then next turn, go for the Thraven Watcher. We still get to hold up our Blacksmith skill this way, too. We don't really care about their Tyler's Provisioner, I don't think. Alright, they did make food, which they can sack for life. Tracker's good. We're playing that pre-combat because it pumps up our Nettle Cyst. Yeah, like I said, this red-white aggro deck is extremely powerful. Alright, so they're going to sack the Parcel Mirror that's blocking the Knighted Mirror. Other two creatures are going to trade. Beautiful. They're going to need something special here to stabilize. Okay, that gives them a lot of tokens. And another parcel mirror. <laughs> Doesn't seem like we have to be too concerned about their deck. Do I want to just equip the Nettle Sys to the Ragavan and attack? Feels right. Attack with everything. Sure. This tracker has Menace, so seems good to me. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have equipped my Menace creature. Hmm, maybe that was better. Also, I tapped poorly. I should have double. I should have equipped with double. Uh, I should have equipped with double. Uh,
Double red. Oh man, I played this turn really poorly. I should have equipped the Arcbound Tracker and then I don't think we could have lost. They also have the food token, so yeah, while I do put them to three this way, as soon as they sack the food token, they go back up to six. So what I'm going to have to do is probably wait until they um, tap out. Oh, okay, they're going to track her here instead. They do have the food mana activation available too. Okay. Play a little bit carelessly. But it seems like we're still going to win this one. So attack with both and pass. They have to go chump plus double block, which is a chump as well. There's one short of killing them. Because again, they could sack the food. Okay. All right, that should do her. Did not play that very well, but our deck is so good that uh, it didn't really matter. I need to slow down and maybe think for a few more seconds next time. <laughs> but yeah, what what a crazy red white modular artifact deck this is. Any sideboard worth bringing in? Don't think so. Nah, we're good to go. Run it back. No red source here, unfortunately. So we're going to have to ship that down to six. Oh, this hand ain't great because it doesn't have something to do on turn one or two, but I don't think I can go down to five. We have a bunch of twos that we can draw. So, let's hope we draw either the Kavu or one of our prototypes. Perfect. And definitely just going to play it out on turn two. Plan on curving out here. Two drop, three drop, four drop seems really nice. That's fine. I think offering the trade is good. Even though their creature could have, have swing in, swung in for more. There's their provisioner, but they didn't have a land, and so now we get to get them. We get to go Whelp, Sack, puts a counter on our tracker, Smack in for three, and now this is going to be really hard for them to win. Because if we draw another spell next turn, we also get to double spell again. Though we did not. But we are currently unblockable here. Wave Sifter. That's a good one. But is it good enough? How close to killing them am I? Wow, very close. Very close to killing them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight is what I count. I guess we'll just wait. Don't really want to sack both my mountains there to push a little bit of damage. We could mind collapse our own um, tracker to pump up our flyer too, but looks like it doesn't matter. Yeah, sick deck. I mean, probably playing super loose, but sometimes your deck is just so strong that it doesn't really matter. The draws are just going to build themselves. All right, now we're 1 0. Alrighty, here we are for round number two of this Modern Horizons 2 draft. 
Once again, on the draw with Ragavan in our opening hand. And this one's a little bit uh, risky. Our opponent has a Soul Talisman? That card is only specifically good on turn one. Let's go for it. I think a lot of times you're supposed to hold Ragavan and try to dash it, but I'm going to go for it turn one, because if they don't have something to do here on turn two, we get a hit in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And we hit a land. That's fine. Um... I'm going to go ahead and play the tracker out here on turn two, even though I already have all the necessary mana to cast it. Oh, baby, am I going to get another hit in with Ragavan? Okay, then this was extremely worth it, I think. So we hit another land. I'm going to go ahead and just kill their Soul Talisman on their upkeep. Instead of playing out one of my two drops or the Extruder. I think that makes the most sense. Because given the fact they also didn't do anything on three, I think blowing up two mana here is just very good. If we draw like a mind collapse, our Ragavan's probably going to be able to smack in again as well, you know? Oh my gosh, how did... What, what did they keep? Underworld Hermit, okay. This game is very confusing to me. I don't remember too many Wrath effects in the format. There is Nevin, uh, Nevin Yerl's Disc. Is there another Wrath? Okay, Draykeeper. That makes them a bunch of tokens, at least. Let's go Extruder Pre-Combat. Attack with both of our artifacts, I think. Okay, so let's just, I guess what we're going to do here is put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Yeah, put a 1-1 one -one counter on our Ragavan, sack the prototype, and then modular onto the tracker here. Keeps our menace creature as the largest, grows our Ragavan a teeny bit. Darn it. We really want to draw a Mind Collapse here, I think. Go ahead and pay the Echo. Yeah, Mind Collapse would be nuts. Oh, that's awkward. Hmm. I guess we do this. Pre-combat. Presumably, yeah. Presumably this is still a good attack because we can sack the bridge to put a counter on another creature. Okay. It still seems good for us. Even though I'm never going to be casting this Thraven Watcher in my hand now. Disciple of the Sun. They can return their catacombs or their talisman. This has a lifelink as well. Hmm. Mind collapse for the win. Go, go. Three in the deck, right? I do have four card types. Perfect. Delirium online. Easy money. All right. Forgot we had that as well. Our deck is so good. My god. I mean, obviously that game was a little bit weird since we had a turn one Ragavan and they didn't do anything until turn five or whatever. Turns out killing that uh, Mox Talisman they had was clutch because that stopped them from casting their Squirrel Maker for a turn.
Mm. The Manticore is good versus a bunch of those squirrels, because you can just discard whatever and kill anything, you know? But I think we're just going to run it back. I mean, that was a really awkward draw for us, and we were still able to get them pretty easily. There's a very nice Elkod. This is a fantastic modular hand. I'm going to go turn one Power Depot, turn two Prototype, turn three Tracker. We could modular on turn two if we wanted to, right? Oh, wait. Is modular only when it dies? Am I, am I crazy? I'm getting modular confused with graft on this card. That's what I'm doing wrong. It's still good in our deck since we have ways to sacrifice it, but for some reason in my head, I thought I was going to be able to graft. Because there are a few lands that actually have graft one like that, but that's not one of them. <laughs> All right, 3-1 Death Touch when it dies, make a treasure, sure. We don't want to attack into that. When you have modular creatures like this, it's just really, really bad um, to not have more than one at any given time, right? Because say I had attack with Prototype there, they trade, and they cast a removal spell on my tracker. Well, then I just don't have anywhere for that modular to go. Break ties. Exactly what I'm talking about. So now we're going to get back to modular here. Okay, we are getting a bit flooded now. Hmm. Five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. You know what? I think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to blow up my prototype and go for the modular on the um, tracker. Because it's got menace. Slight mistake here on my part, though, because if I had played the prototype pre-combat in a case scenario like this i would have hit them for one more point of damage but this is still pretty good we need to find another artifact creature for next turn so that i can continue the modular train down the line or just a removal spell for the cobra would be good wow <sighs> okay i think i wait jeez what a flood out Yikes. It's going to give them plus one plus oh and menace. <laughs> oh, come on. Nine lands, five spells. Holy crap. I mean, the opponent doesn't have anything else going on, but they can actually... What they should be doing is probably activating squirrels multiple times soon and just attacking. All right, that's a good one at least. I don't think we want to attack. So four, eight, so they can double activate, and I can only block one squirrel currently. I don't even remember what Lanus does. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield in your control, they get to investigate, sacrifice a bunch of clues. All right, I see. So many one toughness creatures. Yeah, maybe I should have brought in the. Are you kidding? Maybe I should have brought in the Manticore. This is kind of unreal. Oh my gosh. They should have actually pumped there and forced me to use the Adapt, because now I don't have to use the Adapt. Oh, man. Oh, now they get to keep drawing more cards. Hmm. 
I guess I should also bring in the lightning spear to give my creatures trample. <laughs> uh, yeah, Well, sometimes these games happen. Nothing you can do about it. What is this? I'm not sure what this can be, but I guess I'll just take it. Oh wait, is there a morbid? There's that morbid card, right? Isn't there some zombie that gives morbid or something? No, I don't know what this is. I'm very confused. Ah, spider, okay. So they wanted to be able to investigate, but they get a bunch of clues here anyways. Ah, well, finally drew something. That's too little too late. If we had drawn that f 10 turns ago, <laughs> we probably would have been fine. We probably can't beat this value though. Like if they draw anything here, it's probably worthy of just scooping because they have a clue to sack. Anytime they cast something with four mana or greater, they get to make it another Thopter. Lawness is making them more clues whenever they have creatures. All right, good enough. Let's chalk that up to bad luck. A little bit of variance there. I mean, I'm going to be on the play this time. I just... Hmm. Spear in, patrol out. Yeah, I'm going to leave 17 lands. I think we just got unlucky. Let's go to game three. On the play, I don't have a two drop, I don't have a red source, but I have cyst and mirror. Ah, we can do better. This isn't much better, uh, but I do think it is better. Really need to draw a two drop next turn. If we can just go curve out, that'd be great. Dang it. Okay, good beats. Because I think in a long-term game, they aren't too shabby versus us. Oh, that's a good draw if we can find another mountain. Break ties right now. Yeah, damn it. Oy, 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 oy. Come on, deck. There's Lanus. We can just blow that up with the Yearling. And because we drew Knighted Mirror here, we're definitely not even going to kick the Yearling. This is for three anyways with the Thraben. Very good. All right, here come the squirrels, I imagine. Oh, that's not a squirrel. Okay, that's annoying, but not the worst. Tracker's good. Let's keep the pressure going. Keep the pressure going and flowing.
I don't know, it was probably fine to let the Cobra trade with the Yearling and hold on to the Collapse. But we didn't see any big creatures from them. They were all just a bunch of small ones. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Very good draw. Let's go to combat and see what they do first. Okay. Let me just get to pass priority. Good. Sweet. Come on, just a little bit more pressure is all we need. Ah, there it is. That's a good one. All right, I'm going to go for Mind Collapse end of turn here. Because if they have a Lens Flare, we blow them out. Now they won't be able to cast it. They had another break ties. Okay. Sure. So if they draw a token producer, if they draw like another Drake Keeper, we could actually lose this. But they need to draw a way to make a token for the Junk Winder. That's insane. They did. Okay, I might actually lose this game now. Holy crap. What a crazy draw. Jeez Louise. This is going to be kind of frustrating, but yeah, again, that's the way it goes sometimes. I take five here. Maybe we can rip our uh, Foundry Helix before they pop the food. All right, so they're going to go back up to five. Oh, they didn't sack the food. Wait. Oh, maybe they have a way to copy it? No, I don't know. Oh, well, I must be dead. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They can't kill me with this attack by itself unless they have something else. Okay. Okay, just another blocker. They're going to sack the food finally. Brutal. All right. Well, we are winning on board. That's a good play. Keep their squirrels alive for the uh, Dre Keeper. But if they draw a token producer, we just instantly lose. So, Come on, top decks. Remember, we cannot adapt a creature that always already has 1-1 one -one counters on it. Are you kidding? Wow, said and done. What a draw. Eh, good beats. Not much I can do about that. I think our deck was much, much stronger, but they had a very, very good draw. And, of course, in that other game, we just extreme flooded. So, good stuff. GG's. I do love these type of decks, though. The grind-out value cards and Junkwinder is so amazing. That single-handedly carried them. 
Ah, that makes me feel sad. But let's just try to win the third round. All right, on to the third and final round of this Modern Horizons 2 flashback. What do we have here? Somehow we don't have any ones, twos, or threes. So that's going to be a mulligan on the play. And it looks like we're going to go down to a six-card hand immediately. Or rather, a five-card hand immediately. And this is basically our opening hand, but at least we do have a three-drop this time. Let's pitch the Extruder, and I think we need to go greedy. I think I'm going to pitch a land here. Because we just need to rip well to, uh, to get out of this mulligan to five. Ooh, the opponent's going to be on a fun one. Double land starts real good. Especially when I'm on a mulligan to five and don't have much pressure initially. Love those kind of decks. Yeah! All right. Well, I think that is a must-kill card. Um, I guess we'll see if they randomly block for some reason. So, as much as this sucks, I think I'm going to go ahead... Well, I guess we can wait and see. But, no, I'm going to do this. Because we get the 1-1 one, one counter on the tracker, and if they do cast away to have made a clue, food, or a treasure, we're going to need to have done that anyways. So, this looks awful, and it feels awful, but I think it's what the right play is. 3-5 for 4. And they hit a Grist? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, what can you do? Besides cry. Profusely. Oh yeah, see they had Provisioner with Manufacture. That is so sick. So good. And then they play like Grist here, Uptick. Oh, no, they're going to wait. All right, I'm okay to just scoop this one and go to the next game. Some really unfortunate games here we're getting. Our deck is so clutch. So we're going to be playing against the 3 plus color value deck. We should have a good game plan versus them. All right, on to game two of the final round. Oh, man, again, what are with these hands? I have to mulligan. I can't keep that. Well, that's better at least, but it's not great. Um, let's pitch the helix here. I can't even cast the yearling off of the power depot, nor can I cast the mind collapse because none of those are mountains, but it is what it is. And I did bottom the helix, which is one of our ways to sack the depot. All right, get the Menace Creature online. Hopefully we draw a Mountain. Hmm. So now whenever they cast something with mana value 4 or greater, they're going to start getting a lot of value, but they're missing a lot of their colors, presumably. So I don't feel too bad. They might just like sack their clue and try to find a tap land. Yeah. Mountain here is still very good for us. Okay, we'll go ahead and fire it off. They have a they have a Dahada too? Oh my lord. So four mana. Protection from permanence with corruption counters. Each opponent loses two life, you gain two life, put a corruption counter on something. Um and then they can gain control of something. Yeah, this is so sick. Good news is I do have mind collapse, which can hit the Dahada, but 
good too. All right, we are right back in this game. Does this hit Planeswalkers as well? No, just Creatures. Let's see. Can I kill their Spinner and Dahada in the same turn? Yeah, if I sack the Mountain, which I guess is what we're going to be doing here. Actually, you know what? I think we want to get we want to dump out our hand is what we want to do. So let's go like this. Let's go year, uh, flame tongue on the spinner. Knighted mirror, trigger the tracker. Smack face. And then just collapse to Hada and hit him for an extra one. Okay. Well, this has worked out. Nice, nice. They might have a madness card if they're doing this, though. Nope, they didn't. Nice. Draw two, discard a card, you gain life, you go to the number of cards you've discarded, and then it has a jump start. That's a pretty solid draw too, actually. So they have to block this smear or else they die. Well, that doesn't work. So we want to put the 1-1 one, one counter here and then modular onto the uh, fat boy. And that takes 12 damage. All right. Okay, see? See? Our deck is good. We just need to draw an average, normal type of hand. He said to himself as he cried himself to sleep. No, our deck is fantastic. No mulligans, come on. God damn it. Oh, I want to risk this hand too. It just needs one land. And I'm on the draw. Let's YOLO. We're not even playing for a trophy anyways. Let's YOLO. All right, I'm going to go with tap land turn one because we're going to save the Ragavan for dashing purposes, I think. This is the looter. That's a good card. Yeah, we'll go slow. No reason to rush. And we've gotten extremely lucky, obviously. We've <laughs> hit runner, runner, land perfectly. What is that? Oh, land cycle, the memories journey, sure. Look at this. This is how you do it. You simply keep a one lander and draw perfectly. Maybe that's what I should have been doing with all those other hands that I mulliganed. Nice. All right. Now we are going to unload on them. Blitz the Ragavan, or dash the Ragavan. Memory, collapse, trigger, attack. What do we hit? Ethereum Spinner. We will absolutely cast that. Thank you. And all is Gucci, my friends. That is not good enough. Modular is a hell of a drug. 10, I count 12. <laughs> Planeswalker Tribal's good, but when my deck actually draws correctly, I don't think it's beatable. I think we kind of got unfortunate in the second round, but hey, that final round was a great showcasing of what this deck can do. I mean, again, this is like the premium modular red-white aggro deck. 
so crazy. This almost looks like constructed quality. Anyways, enough griping from me. We pulled off a two in one, so can't be too upset. This is sadly Phantom, so I don't get to keep the Ragavan, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this look at Modern Horizons 2 flashback. I had a good time. We'll see you back next week for some more. Bye. -bye.